Okay, here we are on sub-level 4. Okay, we actually have a spotty bull warp here. And naturally, we're going to want to divide up our Pikmin again. And this time, we're just going to take our purples. We actually have 20 purples now. And this guy is in a very, very strategic place for us. And we're just going to swarm him and kill him. And he actually drops a Game & Watch. I think that's a Game & Watch. Yeah, I'm sure it is. But yeah, we get a Game & Watch, and... They'll take that back, and I believe over here we have another treasure, so... We're gonna need to get our red Pikmin. And this is the... Dream Architect. The architecture, the architecture of dreams. And now you get over here, because there's fire. I don't want you to hurt yourself. Um, shoot, where am I going? Um, wait, just find the dead bull orb. Okay, there it is. Now, I believe the treasure is just behind this little cavern thing. Oh, wow. Um, I just ran right into the fire. I feel like such an idiot. But yeah, here's a playing card. We'll go ahead and take that back. Actually, wait, before we do... Okay. I just want to make sure there weren't any flower Pikmin that were taking that back. Um, geez, I wish I could actually organize this a little better. How do I, um... Oh, whatever. I was wondering how I switch between flowered and leaf Pikmin, but I think you have to just, uh throw them until you actually get one. But yeah, there is the luck wafer, and I believe that's the last treasure for this floor, too. So, okay, got some leaf Pikmin right here. And now, they'll turn into purple Pikmin, so now we have 25 purple Pikmin. We're already one-fourth to the number we need by the end of the game, so that's nice. But uh, purple Pikmin will start becoming more rare from now on, so that is going to be a problem. Plus, there's always the possibility of you losing purple Pikmin too, which, uh, again, try not to do that. Now, before we leave this floor, there are a few eggs we can uh, try to smash and see if we can get some uh, pellets for them, which I... or not pellets, but nectar. In fact, I better be using my red Pikmin for this, just to you know, make this more convenient and not as dangerous. Okay, there's an egg there. The geyser is right here. And there's another egg right here, so... I think that's it, so let's go ahead and grab our purples again. Let's smash this. Let's see if we can get some of our leaf purple Pikmin on this. Okay, not too bad. We still have, like, one leaf Pikmin, maybe two, I don't know. We'll probably get leaf Pikmin from here, or flower Pikmin from this. And I still feel like I have one leaf Pikmin somewhere. Uh, but either way, we are done, so let's go ahead and, uh, leave this. Actually, I don't see any leaves, so I might actually have a full flowered party right now. Which, that's good if that's the case. Okay, so here is sub-level 5, and if I remember correctly, this is actually the boss floor. And let's just say that on this floor, we have one of the most annoying bosses in the entire game. However, uh, this boss is honestly not that bad at this point in the game. Later on, though, uh, this boss will become a lot more difficult. Uh, but what we want to do here is we want to get only our purple Pikmin, because they'll be doing the most damage, and this way, we won't have a terribly big party with us. And... If we have a big party, there's always a possibility that one will get flattened accidentally. Uh, but here we go. Say hello to... The Empress Bull Blacks. Now, 
for this fight, the Empress really doesn't do very much, so to start off, just throw a purple Pikmin on her face. And after a while, call back your Pikmin just to, you know, make sure they don't get flattened by her attack. You can probably guess what her attack is just by looking at her. And you can actually just, you know, throw Pikmin and then quickly call him back. Okay, shoot. Okay, well, here she goes. This is her attack. She basically rolls and tries to flatten your Pikmin. There's actually a, a WarioWare Smooth Moves game based on this boss fight, which I always thought was really cool. I thought they did a great job designing that micro game. But yeah, this boss isn't too bad at this point in the game. Later on, they had a very annoying mechanic to this fight, but we'll go over that later when we actually get to it. Okay, let's see if we can finish her off right now. Uh, the closer you get to her face, the faster this will go, so uh, try to aim there if you can. Oh, wow. Um, there were actually some Pikmin under her. I would have actually lost those if she started rolling. Oh, shoot. Shoot. Come back. I don't think I lost any, but still, that was... That was too close. Okay, well, I'm just going to finish her off right now, because... Yeah, she's dead. And when you destroy the Empress, you get this treasure right here, which is the Love Tester. <laughs> yes, that's right, we actually get a Love Tester in a Nintendo game. Uh, but in all seriousness, this treasure is actually very valuable. Uh, this treasure will actually help us inside of caves and outside of caves. And uh, we're going to see what it does once we actually get it back to the ship. And you can also uh, take in the Empress as well and get... Um, a decent amount of Pocos from her, but like I said, I'm not going to try to go for enemy bodies. You get more than the usual amount of uh, Pocos for enemies for the Empress, but it's not that many more. Like, normally you get only about 2 or 3 Pocos. I think for the Empress you get about like 15, but it's still not very much. But yeah, this is the uh, prototype detector. And this will actually double as not only a treasure, but as a radar. And with this radar, we can actually tell how close we are to treasures. And if there are no treasures in the area, the uh, radar won't even work. It'll turn gray like it is right now. So, very helpful treasure, and we're going to want to use it as much as possible. But for now, we're done with this cave, so let's go back to the surface. And immediately after this, we're actually going to go to another cave, because uh, we can. And uh, I, I want to try to actually do everything I can. Well, maybe not everything I can, but... Um, basically, I want to do enough in the overworld, or the uh, surface area, so that I can actually go to the next area, which means I have to get a very particular treasure. And I should be able to get it if I can move fast enough. Like, it shouldn't be a problem at all. Okay, and when you return back to the surface, a few things happen. Uh, first, all of the uh, pellet posies actually uh, regrow again. And also, any of the sheer grubs you destroyed will actually uh, also be uh, reinstalled as well. But all of the uh, major enemies will actually be gone, so we don't have to destroy the uh, creeping chrysanthemum or the uh, uh, burrowing... Sn or not... The... Crawling burrow knit, or whatever that thing is called. But anyway, we have enough Pikmin that we can actually flatten this bag now, because we needed 200, and the most we could do was like 95, so now we can actually flatten that bag now. And right here we have another burrow knit. Let's go ahead and destroy this. And after we do that, we can actually go to the next cave, which is right here. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to try to get two caves done in this one day. Which is how I'm normally going to try to approach things. I'm going to uh, try to do all of the above ground stuff first, and then kind of focus on the caves. It just so happens that right now, like, I want to get through the caves because I still need to 
get my second new Pikmin type. So for the uh, White Flower Garden, there is fire and there's also poison. But we have no Pikmin that are immune to poison. Yet. If that gives you any sort of hint. But anyway, here we are at the White Flower Garden. This cave is not too bad. Once again, I'm gonna move forward because there are shear grubs here. And I actually forgot to heal Olimar. I think you can heal Olimar, I don't remember for sure. I have a feeling you can, but... If so, now is not the time or place. Okay, so once again, get rid of all the purple ones. And once you do that, you can actually uh, move forward and do everything you're supposed to do here. I'm just checking right now, though. I think we got it, though. I think we're safe, so... Let's go back and get our... Probably just my red Pikmin. Again, just for speed. Also, whenever you have an area like this... Do not throw Pikmin over the side, because the Pikmin will automatically die. And you do not want that to happen, obviously, so... Just avoid that if you can. And over here we have... Kiwi Shoe Polish. So they're going to take that back, and that should be the last treasure, so... I'm just going to go over here and wait by the... Entrance to the next sub-level. Yeah, this, uh, the entire cave aspect of this game, it gets pretty, like, obvious, and it becomes second nature to you very, very easily. It's all just a matter of exploring what you have to deal with at first, and then, you know, kind of organize a strategy for each floor. Things will get a lot more complicated the further we go down. Uh, but we're done with this floor, so let's go ahead and move on to the next one. And I have to admit, I'm doing this a lot faster than I expected to. But, I mean, that's good, because I didn't want these videos to be terribly long anyway. Okay, so on this floor, we actually have a returning enemy. We have the Fiery Blowhogs. For those who don't remember or who don't know, Fiery Blowhogs are enemies that shoot fire at you. Which means we're going to be using Red Pikmin and take care of them. Now, they have two attacks. First, they shoot fire, obviously. And then they can also shake your Pikmin forward. Now, that's actually pretty dangerous on a floor like this because they can go over the side. But, I believe they shoot fire first. So, what you want to do is you want to swarm them as soon as possible and kill them before they have a chance to, uh, you know, do their second attack. And after that, it's pretty easy, so just, you know, do that and you should be fine. Plus, we have a lot of uh, red Pikmin with us anyway, so that shouldn't be too much of an issue. Okay, so they can take that back and we'll go get the second treasure, which is actually right here by the, um, right by the uh, ship, so we'll go ahead and grab that too. Make this move a little faster, and then we'll move to the um, exit geyser. Or not the exit geyser, but the uh, next floor entrance. And it's a Dr. Pepper bottle cap, which is a drought ender. Another one of those very creative names. And here is the other treasure, which is... The Petrified Heart. It's petrified. And with that, we can move on. And this next floor is actually the important floor I was talking about earlier. Because this is where we're actually going to find our next Pikmin type.
And like the purple Pikmin, the next Pikmin type, they're also very, very useful. First, we have to climb down the slope first, though. And here we go, the white Pikmin flowers. So we're going to get white Pikmin. So, let's go ahead and, uh, remember, get your red Pikmin. We do not want to get rid of any purple Pikmin. Getting rid of purple Pikmin would be very, very stupid. So, let's go ahead, throw our red Pikmin into the flower. Then the new Pikmin type starts to sprout. And say hello to the white Pikmin. As I've mentioned before, white Pikmin have an immunity to poison, but I believe they're also the fastest Pikmin type. They are the most productive Pikmin type. They're not the... They don't really have any advanced battle strength, though. They're just, they just fight like normal Pikmin do, uh, like a yellow and blue Pikmin once we get them. And uh, they have a few other unique attributes as well, or attributes. Uh, they can actually um, poison enemies whenever they're eaten by an enemy, but of course you waste a white Pikmin that way. And, as we'll see momentarily, they're also very valuable because they can find hidden treasures hidden in the ground. So if your radar starts going off and you can't find the treasure, that's because it might be hidden underground and then you need to get some white Pikmin to help you out, so that is something to keep in mind. So while they unearth this uh, roll of tape, I'm going to see if I can find any eggs, because I have a feeling there might be some eggs around here that have uh, nectar that I can use to... I make these guys a little more productive. So I'm gonna go ahead and put them over here for right- oh, okay. That works. Come here, Mr. Honey Wisp. Okay, let's go ahead and get you guys nectared up as well. And there we go, I have my own army of 15 white Pikmin. But for right now, I'm going to take these guys and have them take the tape back. Just so I can, uh, get this going fast. And then I can just go to the exit, which I believe is right over here. But once again, not the exit, but the, uh, entrance to the next floor. Unfortunately, we're going to be waiting for a little while because the uh, ship was actually up quite a ways. But yeah, like I said, I'm actually very impressed that I've actually made it this far in only like 40 minutes because, like I said before, if, if I didn't, well, I'm saying it now, but uh, I'm going to try to record all of these days at once. So I'm going to record an entire day at once, and I'll just, you know, divide up the video into about 20 minute parts, and that'll basically be, you know, my uploads, one video per update and everything. So uh, I'm actually only at the 40 minute mark right now, and uh, I didn't expect to be this far at this point, but I'm glad I am. So uh, now that we're done with that, we're going to go ahead and move forward once again with our new white Pikmin in tow. And I believe